to win those championships. He took home four in a row back in the mid-70s. Larson in the near lane. Prudhomme in the far lane. This is the final of the Gastro GTX Ball National. Prudhomme up in smoke. And Larson plays away yet another former champion. Chris Larson, the last time, 5.49 seconds in V265 miles an hour. As we look in replay as the crew celebrates, Chris Larson was a bit late off the starting line. Prudhomme had the advantage, but then he lost it in a billowing cloud of white smoke when those huge tires broke traction. First, they just spun a little bit, and then the smoke continued to boil off the back of the Pontiac, and Prudhomme did the only thing he could do, and that is shut the engine down and watch in despair as Bruce Larson streaked ahead and crossed the finish line, the winner. Bruce Larson wins his sixth NHRA national event of the year on the same day that you clinched the Winston title. It's a dream. What a perfect way to end the day. The car got loose at mid-track. Real loose, but uh, I saw him fading back, so I figured he was loose at the same time. So you saw him part of the way down the racetrack there? Oh, yeah, he was there for about half the track, and then he started to fade. You know, you won most of your races uh, in the first half of the season. Does it mean something special to get one towards the last half to prove to people just uh, why you're the champ? Oh, yeah, we want to go down swinging. Boy, and they are. Look out, Pomona. <laughs> Now set for the funny car final, you are looking at John Force, the defending event champion, and he'll be opposed by Bruce Larson. And with the sun almost down, you'll see the long nitro flames that are always there, but not visible under bright sunshine. This should be quite a show for the fans. The funny car final round. Oh, it's a beautiful start. Larson got a little out of the groove but manages to hang on. Bruce Larson wins it by, oh, he's got a little fire underneath that car, Don. Yeah, he probably burned a piston. You know, the air got heavier. It's real cool out here, and he maybe didn't tune it up enough for that. So into the interview area, Bruce Larson brings his own light. Yeah, he's burning pure aluminum there. That makes a nice white fire. You better watch out if you're burning the paint off this world champion car. Well, that's just a little oil. No harm, no big damage to the automobile. The safety safari snuffs it right out. Boy, I'm sure Larson doesn't care. He's won it all, and he won this one right off the starting line. You know, his reaction times have not been good today, but on this particular run, he was ready for John Force because John Force was ready for him. And it was a really good race, but Larson, notice, pulls it out just a little bit. Not a big difference in the two cars, the type of a race that the fans really love. And Steve is standing by with the funny car champ. Well, an anxious moment down here, Don, Fred, is Bruce Larson, no sooner than he won the race, the car lit up underneath, lots of fire, lots of smoke, the safety safari, as always, right on hand to put it out. He is out of the car, he is okay, he is not only the Winston champion for 89, he's the Winston finals winner as well. You are okay. Yeah, yeah, no fire come in there at all. What do you think was going on there? I don't know. I guess maybe a valve cover gasket blew out. It wasn't anything serious. We're happy. Now, I think this is the sixth time that we've been able to say thanks to Century and thanks to Oldsmobiles. Thanks to my crew. Those guys are terrific. So are you. What a fantastic year. Indeed, for all of us. Bruce Larson, funny car winner who won here at the Winter Nationals. Bob Glidden also won. After what we saw with Mike Dunn and Don Perdome, I don't think you're going to see the snake uh, very uh, selective about who stages first. Yeah, snake is not going to be uh, trying to run Larson's race. He's going to stage when his car is ready to go. And they are both in. It's a beautiful start. The nitro flames looking at the fiberglass bodies. It is Don Perdome. A dream weekend for the snake. 527 defeats Larson's 537. Like a 527, he's done it again at the U.S. National. Uh, it would have been nice to set the record, but uh, we'll take the sweep. We're all happy. I can't say enough. It's uh, been a long week. I'd like to thank the crew. We've got a great crew. And uh, Dana Kimmel, uh, Larry Dixon Jr., Troy Tronson, uh, all the guys, Curtis Dipple, all the guys that helped this week, uh, the people from uh, the rear end company, uh, U.S. Gear, uh, they made a set of rear end gears for us that let us 
run these kind of elapsed times this week. Historic time. Maybe it's the last win in a funny car for him. Oh, well, there's some races left. We can do some more winning this year, and uh, we're going to go to Texas a race, so uh, maybe we'll see some more teens down there in Texas. We look forward to it. Congratulations. Well, that's what you want, Don Girl. It's a crew chief who is never satisfied, who always wants more. That's right. As we watch this replay of this start, we can see that Larson was getting his act together. They make a beautiful start. They come out side by side where, you know, generally all day long, Larson had been late in driving around these guys, but he knew he wasn't going to drive around the snake. It was, in fact, the snake driving around Larson at mid-track, and he went on to take this win in grand style. It's been a long time, maybe never, have we seen. Oh, a funny car performance like this man put on this weekend. You won in your own style, a throat-ripping, back-breaking performance. Well, thank you, Steve. I'll tell you, I owe it all to Skull, Pontiac, and my, my crew, Mike Clover, Dana, Larry, all the guys. Uh, Troy did a tremendous job. You know, we've been struggling in the first part of the year, and to come here to Indy, it's been a been a special race for me since 1965, the first time I won it. There was no messing around on the starting line this time. Larson went right up in stage. In fact, he overstaged. Yes, he did, I, but I knew he was going to overstage and push the light, and I just uh, did the best I could do and uh, try and get off as good as I could with him because he's an awful good driver. Can you look back now and believe how flawless this weekend has been? It's just been wonderful, and I don't even know what the ET was. Can you tell me? A 27, does it matter? Oh, that's great. It, yeah, it's just really running consistent. I wish we could have set the national record while we were here. We were hoping on the last run we'd do it, but there's going to be more races. And to win the U.S. Nationals in what might be your last appearance in a funny car special. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what makes it uh, really, really special, because I am going to top fuel, and, and this is where I started out, Indy here, you know, in 65 with a top fuel car and to, and to end my career in a funny car at this race is uh, great and once again i just got to thank my sponsor skull our best thank you very much steve look out top fuel snakes on his way you can certainly tell the importance of the u.s nationals by the emotion that the snake is displaying here for us <laughs> Scott Coletta with his Oldsmobile backing up into his own track, getting set for the single most important race of his short career. Previously campaigning alcohol, funny cars, and a top fuel dragster, he now is making his very first final round appearance at an NHRA national event. He has got the toughest racer of them all this day. That is the new national record holder, Bruce Larson, who is already staged and ready to go. Coletta out near the guardrail. Larson ahead and problems for Larson. Coletta in the upset of the day. Wins his first ever national title. His dad, Connie, on the starting line with the biggest smile we've seen in 20 years. Scott Coletta with a 5.57 second elapsed time upsets Bruce Larson. Watch again. They both leave the starting line at what appears to be the same time, but actually Coletta had four hundredths of a second advantage. At that point on the track, the problem set in for both drivers. You see the fire under the car of Larson. That indicated an engine problem. Scott Coletta got near the outside guardrail, but he never lifted. However, Larson was forced to lift, allowing Coletta to slip by and win the race. Your father has gone absolutely bananas oh, on the starting line. I'll bet. I cannot believe it. He shut it off too early. He had me covered and he shut it off. He had some big time engine problems too, though. Did he? Oh, I don't know. I, mine was all over the racetrack. I had my hands full and I knew going in the deal that I was going to have my work cut out. I didn't think I was going to win because I ain't only been down the track once today. You got so close to the wall. Did you think about just throwing in the towel? Uh -uh. <laughs> I could still see where I was. Your first win. These guys are going nuts. Houston ain't ready for us tonight. I can't wait! It will be party time in Houston, I assure you. <laughs> that win by Scott. Brent Steed, with the lane choice, has selected the lane nearest the camera. A great start for Larson. Bernstein tries to close, but cannot do it, and Bruce Larson wins the Seafair Nationals. His elapsed time of 5.40 and 271. Kenny Bernstein even quicker at a 5.37. Watch again in replay, and you can see the advantage.
that Bruce Larson got at the starting line. It is nearly eight hundredths of a second. With Bernstein running three hundredths of a second quicker down the quarter mile, the margin on the clock about five hundredths of a second. That computes to a full car length plus. If one word describes this Bruce Larson victory, I think it's intensity on the part of the crew. And what did you do to psych yourself up to cut a light like that? <laughs> I just said there had to be another great day for all these good sponsors and, and for the crew that worked so hard. The crew's worked awful hard on this three-race swing. I just had to give them something to be proud of. You know, you won running a little bit slower. That's a driving job. Yeah, you got to give it a whole, give Kenny a whole shot. <laughs> Tell me about the race itself, starting line to finish line. Well, I never saw him. I knew that I left real good. Uh, I staged kind of deep, and I knew it, and I knew it was a good light, and uh, it just felt good the whole way down the track. I never saw him. It's really another great day for Century and Key Parts and Oldsmobile and Kendall. It's terrific. Indeed. Bruce Larson, they threw everything they had at him. And somewhere in this racing facility is Kenny Bernstein, hoping that Mark Oswald can stop the points earning capability of Bruce Larson. Larson, a tremendous hole shot. Larson ahead. Larson maintains the lead. Oh. Larson runs a 566 to Mark Oswald's 562. What a blow to Oswald's pride as a driver. But Don Garlitz is with a man who is ecstatic. Crew Chief Maynard Yanks. I couldn't believe my eyes. You're over there changing a jet right at the last minute. Well, I I'll tell you what happened there. Uh, I thought uh, Mark ran a 60. I didn't know he ran a 50. And I get after the clutch in the, back in the pits as we were pulling out. And then Timmy come up and give me a, a last-minute jet change. And I think it helped. So we won anyway. The congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you. A breathless Maynard Yinks ready now to go down and congratulate his driver as Bruce Larson wins for the third time this season. And we take another look. Watch that Larson car move. Jet change is exactly what it needed. It gave an extra fuel at the start, and he begins to pull out almost immediately in front of Oswald. And because you don't have heavy air, if you have a lean engine, it won't run good. He needed the fuel to maintain that lead. Well, what a season Bruce Larson is enjoying. He's out of the car now, and Steve Evans is there. With this win, Bruce Larson has sent a message, I believe, to Kenny Bernstein in that camp that they're nobody's doormat. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Steve. You won it with a hole shot. You ran slower, but you got there first. Is that right? Good. Uh, this, this Century Tax engages key parts, Oldsmobile, Kendall Oil car just flew today. It hooked up to a track that a lot of other cars couldn't hook up to. That was partly to the credit of Tim Richards and Maynard Ginks and my whole crew. So uh, they kind of made it easy for me. Were you concerned at all sitting in the car when Maynard started changing jets? Well, Tim come over and had an idea that uh, he thought would work, and when Tim speaks, it usually works. Absolutely. Who do you suppose that could be? Hey. <laughs> Ready now for the funny car final. Kenny Bernstein against Ed McCullough. And even though there's over $30,000 to the winner and a lot of prestige winning the Summer Nationals, these drivers are thinking points, just like Bruce Allen is. The points will go to Kenny Bernstein for the final round. Bernstein, 541 to Ed McCullough's 550. Gary is with Dale Armstrong. Dale. Well, we talked about consistency the last two events, Montreal and now here in the Summer Nationals. You guys are back. Yeah, I hope so. I hope it continues this way. Uh, that was a heart stopper there. I thought we were behind. But it, he pulled it out on the top end, I guess. Terrific run. Thank you. That wasn't an illusion. They were behind Don Garland. I mean, they were behind big time. McCullough made a beautiful start off the starting line, but look at those tires trying to get loose. But he maintains that lead. And I'll tell you what, Bernstein needed that 541 to get there first. What a drag race. 541 for you. You saw that goal car for a long ways. You know, I didn't really see him out there, uh, but uh, that's just probably a blind spot. But I knew it was going to be close. It's a good race, and he's been on his game all week. And I just can't say enough to Dale Armstrong and the crew the job they did on the Budweiser Quaker State Buick. I'll tell you. Enjoy it. Thank you.
How about Mark Oswald, Don Garbage? He's had nothing problems, a fire, a blown up computer, a blown up rear end. What do you think? It's a real credit to the crew that the car's even sitting on the starting line, in my opinion. Second time this year for this pair to be in a finals at Memphis in the Mid-South Nationals. It was Oswald against Bernstein, and Bernstein got his only win, and off the line, a little smoke off the far side, and Kenny Bernstein has done it again. You can see that Mark Oswald drifted out of that very distinctive racing lane. A win goes to Bernstein. Great job there, oh, Dale. I know you guys worked hard. I watched you yeah, all day long. Yeah, it was a tough one. Uh, we had to put one new disc in it. That's why it slowed down a little bit. But, uh, oh, we're fortunate. It was a good day. Thank you, Don. Career win number 29 being savored by Kenny Bernstein, Dale Armstrong, and crew. And here's how they left the line, Don Garlitz. Well, Kenny Bernstein makes a beautiful start, taking an advantage immediately. Oswald got a little bit nervous in the run, and you can see the car start to drift out of that real black strip down the racetrack. And when you do that, you lose traction, and Bernstein stayed true and narrow right in the black mark and wins easily. And Steve Evans again alongside another winner. If Kenny Bernstein is successful in winning his fifth NHRA Winston Funny Car title, I think we'll all look back to Montreal and say that's where he made his move. Well, let's hope this is it. It certainly didn't hurt us any. And I'll tell you, hats off to Budweiser and Quaker State Buick, Mac Tools and Planners, our sponsors and all our associates, but especially my crew today. Their tongues are hanging out, Steve, but they did a heck of a job. And uh, that young man in the other lane did a heck of a job. Mark Oswald, whenever you run that car, the Motorcraft Ford, with that, that group there, they're the tough in the business. They're the toughest there is, and the two red cars always battle it out. 551. Well, that's good for the final. I mean, that's all you want to do is win. Had a little tire shake, spun the tires off the starting line then. Uh, it wasn't smooth at this end like it had been all day, but hey, we'll take it. The, the win's a win. Right. Some 4,000 horsepower on tap from each of these nitro burning engines. Oswald gets the advantage. wins the California Nationals title. Don Prudhomme's at laps time, 5.32 seconds, 272 miles an hour, and Mark Oswald was close behind with a 5.36. Two hundredths of a second was the advantage Mark Oswald had when he left the starting line. But by the time they neared the finish, he was watching Prudhomme begin to pull ahead and at the end of the quarter mile, you can see the margin of victory, a half a car length. Did you know that you had won Don Perdome? Well, about a half track or so. Uh, he spotted me a little on the start line, it seemed like about a half track. It, uh, it started to make its move. And uh, once it started pulling, and he kind of faded away. You know, in your own words, when you win, you like it to be a throat-ripping, back-breaking performance. It was. Well, you know, it really was, but the crews had a lot to do with it, and Skull, and Performance Corner, Pontiac, all those people. But, you know, uh, this kid by the name of uh, Don Gay uh, Jr., I'd really like to dedicate this race to. Very, very nice. He, by the way, is doing very well in the Houston hospital. Just had skin grass, and they expect him out of there shortly. Yeah, we've been keeping track of him, and I hope he gets well soon and gets back racing. Don Perdome, what a nice thought. And of course, Don Gay Jr., just my owe his life to Don Perdome in that emergency situation we saw at Denver. <laughs> For Ed McCulloch, he has had low ET of the meet of a 5.37 second elapsed time. Bruce Larson smoking the tires, trying to stay with him, and all smoke pulls it off. Ed McCulloch wins the race, but Bruce Larson almost caught him. A 5.55 second elapsed time, his speed 266 miles an hour. As we watch this one again, you can see the advantage gained by McCulloch at the start, nearly five hundredths of a second. Then, the tires broke loose for Bruce Larson, and the smoke started to pour off of those huge slicks. But at the finish line, Larson wasn't about ready to give up. He actually ran four hundredths quicker, but couldn't catch him. Let the record show that Ed McCullough just did to Bruce Larson exactly what Bruce Larson did to Kenny Bernstein at the last race. You whole-shotted your way to victory. What goes around comes around, you know. 
Uh, did you know who won? It was a thousands if you do the math. I tell you, it was so close out there. I thought I was in good shape. The thing left the starting line and went out there. Uh, I didn't see him. I didn't see him. And all of a sudden, I'm going just into the lights. And I sort of looked out there, and there's that red fender. And I said, boy, this is close. But I was pretty sure that I had him. Wonderful driving, Ace. Thank you, Steve. Ed McCullough, the Quaker State North Star Funny Car Champion.